Thanks for joining us for another Kickstarter Conniption. Today we will be previewing the game New Osaka from 3X Game Studios. As always, we want to make sure you are aware that our preview videos are sponsored in part by our Kickstarter backers and the creators of this game. Hey guys, welcome to Tantrum House Studio Awesome. I'm Ryan. And I'm Katie, and today we're going to be taking a look at New Osaka from 3X Game Studio. It's an area control, resource management, combat game for up to four players. And what we have here is a prototype, so some aspects will change in the final product. Let's take a look. In New Osaka, each player takes on the role of a large corporation. You will get a player board along with standees to represent the different units you control, dice for actions and battles, manager meeples, and flags to show areas you control on the map. You will also get a deck of battle cards that are unique to your corporation, secret goal cards, and a character card that will give you an extra power or bonus. On the player board you have many options for upgrading your units, all of which cost specific combinations of resources. At the start of a round, each player will roll a die to see how many action points they have to use during that round. Even if you roll low, there are ways to mitigate it by upgrading the speed at which your units can move. The map of New Osaka is a large board with hex spaces inside larger sectors. The type of spaces include engineer stations, air transport stations, and mechanical parts stations. All of these locations can be claimed by a player with a flag and other players have to spend extra manager meeples to use that space. These also have four-sided dice that mark which resources or raw materials or how many of those resources you can draw out of a bag and then you get to keep one of those. Special spaces let you use raw materials to convert them into a finished product. If you don't want to go through all those steps, there are factory spaces that allow you to pay money for a chance to roll to get a finished product. That is a gamble though, since you may pay a lot of money and not really get anything. In the middle of the board is a large area that is open where you will work to build new buildings for points. These buildings have finished product requirements for building them though. Each building will give you points for completing the first phase, then they will flip over and have additional requirements to complete, giving more points. It's also important to be strategic in what tiles you choose and where to place them. Each tile is numbered and collecting a sequence of numbers of different buildings will be worth points along with a secret goal cards that you might have and that might have a pattern on them that you need to build in. Okay, let's not forget the monster spaces on this board. Each monster space shows what type of monster is there, and going to fight it can score you some points if you win. The monsters all have different dice they throw in battle, and different rewards for defeating them. If you manage to defeat a monster above a certain amount, they will also yield valuable resources. Uh, you know what else you can do to get some valuable resources? attacking other players controlled areas. Yes, attacking other players to take their stuff is a fast way to get what you need. If a battle mech attacks another player's claimed area, base, or storage space, the defender can move his battle mech to the space to defend. Each player then gets to choose a battle card and then throw their dice to see who is the winner. They add up any missiles for extra attack and the defender gets to add in any small defense cannons that they may have on that space. If the defender wins, the attacker pays them 3 yen and returns the battle mech to his own base. If the attacker wins, he gets to take two engineers if he's attacking the base, two resources if attacking a storage space, or he gets to replace his flag with the new flag if he was attacking a station. The attacker also gets any points or rewards marked on his combat card. At the end of rounds 8, 11, and 15, a large monster called Saboba attacks the new buildings in the middle of the board. Hopefully the players have deployed and built up their plasma cannons and laser defense towers. Saboba will randomly attack a sector and will fight all the battle mechs. 
If a player wins a battle with Saboba, they get 10 points. If they lose the buildings in that sector, they will lose 2 points. The game ends at the end of the 15th round or when all of the building tiles have been built. Look at all extra extra points scored on secret goal cards and then the player with the most points will win. Overall, the game is quite extensive with several options for players to consider on each of their turns. Since resources uh, factor very heavily into the gameplay, it's really important for players to manage their resources wisely. If this seems interesting to you, check out New Osaka on Kickstarter. And be sure to stay tuned to our channel for more previews. Seashells. She sells seashells on the seashore. Previewing the new game, new, the new game, sorry. <laughs> So much for your vocal warm-ups. <laughs> Sorry. I didn't practice my W's. Okay. This is the last take on this one. Okay.